Hope you haven't uh, got tired too much because we've got two more talks before we go to after party. Uh, and uh, right now on stage uh, you see Roman Grebenikov and he will talk about uh, building an open source online learn to rank engine. So these applause are for you. <laughs> Thank you. Talk about, ah, oh, much better. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Roman Grivenikov, and today we're going to talk about uh, ranking. Uh, just a short introduction about me, so that's probably me screaming. So, um, coming originally from academia, worked for quite some time in different areas of machine learning and like quant trading, credit scoring, and for the last couple of years, it's e-commerce, search, personalization, ranking, and all that stuff. I was actually quite surprised that I might talk about machine learning got accepted to high load. There is no mentions of databases, Postgres, or petabytes of information, but here we go. And uh, I'm currently maintaining an uh, open source project called MetaRank, which is actually about ranking. When people t talk about ranking, they usually uh, assume something like search ranking, so what you have a search query and the products. But Ranking is a bit more wider than just only search. It's not only search because if you're talking about e-commerce, the layout of your categories or category pages or recommendation widgets and so on and so forth is still uh, important for your business metrics because the way you uh, distribute the products across the page will uh, affect your business metrics. It's not only about e-commerce, because if you uh, swap products to cat pictures, it would be the same story, but maybe it's a bit, a bit different business metric, like engagement rate, click-through rate, or a uh, number of viewed advertisements, but it's still also about metrics and about uh, uh, ranking. It's not only about static ranking, which can, you can pre-compute, like algorithmical feeds on Twitter and Facebook are a good example. And it's not only about content as uh, per se, so if you're typing a message to someone in Slack, for example, the list of people suggested to you is also about ranking. Maybe you have 1,000 people in your company. Who are you going to send message to? So uh, there is an area of machine learning uh, focused on ranking optimization problem. It's called learning to rank. And it's not usually that uh, quite a popular thing a lot uh, across machine learner people, and especially here in Highload. But still, we're going to talk about learning to rank and some basics of that and what can you do. And when people coming from search and trying to optimize the ranking, when they usually try to catch some sort of like low-hanging fruits. There is an existing tooling for that. You have Elasticsearch, open source, solar, whatever. Uh, you have search query, and your documents usually have some like a title field and a description field. And that's obvious that probably a match over title field is more important than a match over description field. So you can fine-tune weights of these fields a bit so your result, search results will be more relevant. So you uh, play around, find out, play around, find out, like a repeated every test until you converge into some probably optimal weights for your relevancy uh, and uh, with some probably optimal uh, business metrics at the end of your A-B test. But it seems like a machine learning problem. So you have a black box of search. There is some input, like field weights on the left side, you have some a business metrics on the right side, you play with the weights and see how it affects the business metric. Uh, so why don't we just use existing machine learning tooling even for the ranking problem? Uh, because iterative A-B tests, if you just do too many of them, takes quite a lot of time. You can wait for a year until all of them finish. But uh, actually, the more parameters you add into your ranking, if it's not only two, like description field uh, weight and title weight and something else, your ranking function becomes very fragile. You fix A, it breaks B, you fix B, it breaks C, and so on and so forth, because it's just hard to monitor what's going on without a proper like data-driven approach to that. 
but from the business perspective, building a giant machine learning system across with different data streams and so on, it's just too risky because um, you need to build it and usually it's a long project. And uh, if you are from Yandex, you probably have experience building ranking systems. If you are not, so that's uh, that's the problem. And that's actually not that much of a tooling available. So the whole project becomes quite a high risk project from the business perspective. Uh, but uh, and this project doesn't giving you a quick feedback about what can you do. So if you multiply some random things together while doing ranking, like what, let's multiply our relevancy to by click through rate. So high click items will be on the top. You got a quick feedback. You just multiply, make an A-B test, call it a day. If you go with a learn to rank, who knows, something will happen in half a year. We need to do a lot of custom tooling. So the same story happened with other areas like vector search or like neural search, semantic search, it's just different names of the same thing. When you're not just searching over terms, but searching over some sort of semantics, which hopefully will work, because all these algorithms and libraries were available for quite some time, it became hyped only recently because there are some existing tooling on top of that. So there are some vector search engines you can throw documents there and get results without messing with existing gluing things together. So existing tooling made it approachable, but existing tooling didn't made it approachable for the learning to rank problems because it's still a high risk investment. So you need to have a team. Luckily, if you have a team can, which can do it, it uh, for our experience and experience of other people we talk to, it takes kind of six months or something till the first A-B test if you start doing it. It depends on the team I see if someone is like, but probably it can be shorter, it can be longer, it depends. Uh, but like median value is uh, six months. Then out of the six months, probably five, you will spend just uh, writing some ad hoc Python code to glue all the things together to make it work. Uh, and um, there is a wonderful article published by Google about hidden technical depth in machine learning. So. Actually, the whole machine learning code you run and all the data scientists really like to focus on is just a very small thing in the center and you need to write a lot of different tooling to do all the boring and uh, data engineering things like data collection, feature extraction, data validation and so on. And there are some existing solutions for that like ES LTR learning to rank plugin but they are not covering all of that at all. So learn to rank plugin for Elasticsearch does just a bit of modeling, a bit of feature extraction, all that stuff around should be handled by you, which is fine if you have time, team and money to pay for that, but not always that uh, the good thing to do. Uh, and I uh, took part in different projects related to ranking and each time I ask myself a question, does my ranking factors unique? Like do we uh, aren't we reinventing the wheel at the end? Because technically, if you are doing some sort of ranking focused on a web, there are some generic things like user agents, refer, geolocation, some matching over your search query to fields, some metadata related, related to people coming from to your website and about the items you have, some behavioral things like different types of counters, rates, and maybe customer profile you can collect. But still, it looks like the same if you join enough projects related to the ranking. And it's not only about the ranking factors you might use, it's also about the data setup. So if you're, it's still the same impressions, same clicks, some metadata, you do some feature engineering, throw everything to some sort of a feature store to do this historical replace and slap something out of the shelf like Lambda Mart on top, so it will be your like machine learning cherry on top of the pie. Uh, and it would be wonderful, it will be some sort of a tool like a, with Pareto style improvements. So it won't solve everything, it will solve like 80% or 70%, which is typical and most boring for building such of the systems, but it will do it quite like nice. Uh, so that's why we build a MetaRank, it's an open source like uh, personalization and ranking thing 
to work on. Uh, it's actually a second order ranker. So it's not a search engine, it's a thing which sits after your search engine. So you need to have a first level retrieval available, like, you know, Elasticsearch or whatever, you searching for cats, you ask it to, for the candidates matching your cats query, you get top 100, 1000 candidates, you pass it for the ranking, and at that moment, MetaRank pulls all the information about the cats, about you, about weather, about things, runs the machine learning model for you, and then calls it a day, probably improving ranking, but it should be better from the business metric you've defined, like, I don't know, conversion rate or the click-through rate. Um, and MetaRank is not that really different from existing probably closed source or proprietary systems uh, which are doing similar things. So it's just different tastes of feature engineering and feature processing running both on real-time events and on historical data, which is all joined into some sort of a feature storage to store not only the ranking features which are for the current moment of time, but like the whole change logs. If you're uh, having a click-through rate for an item, it's not like the click-through rate of an item right now, but all the changes of this click-through rate back in time. So you can go back and see what was the click-through rate half a year ago for this item. And it's open source, Apache 2, actually written in Scala, so, but it's a single jar file or a Docker container, so you don't need to be a Kubernetes expert to run it. And uh, to start working with MetaRank, you, the only, you need actually just a couple of things, like important things. The first one is historical click-through data. So as it's a machine learning model, so it needs a machine learning system, it needs to know how people interacted with your ranking before. So you need to have it in a specific format. I will focus on that a bit later. And you train like a Lambda Mart model. We do support XGBoost, LightGBM. There will be probably CatBoost support somewhere in the future if someone will help me or not. And then just uh, the problem is that CatBoost and uh, GVM is kind of special relationships uh, because I have no idea how to train CatBoost model from GVM. And at, least, at least from the documented way. I found non-documented way. Uh, okay, so you run an inference API. They're just Redis as a backend for this uh, uh, inference features used right now, and that's it. Uh, the data model taken by the meta rank, so you, which you use to describe your like interactions, ranking, and all the metadata, it's inspired by existing data models of different companies, but we're trying to be more simple so it can fit different use cases. So every time you need to notify MetaRank about a thing, like an entity you're going to work with, like a visitor or an item, you just throw a metadata event. For example, if you're talking about e-commerce, it can be item price, title, tags. For a person, it can be visitor profile t taken from CRM or whatever. Every time this visitor views a listing, like a list of products in your search results or an autocomplete list, a recommendation widget, you show an impression like what was displayed to this visitor. And then every time visitor clicks or add to cart something or does mouse hover or whatever, you send an interaction event. So that's three type of events. It's just some JSON plain flat JSON objects with some arbitrary fields there. So uh, nothing fancy if it's a product one with a title, nice jeans with price, color, availability. And uh, these uh, metadata updates are actually can be done partially. So if your price changed, nothing, you don't need to send everything again. Every time you send, make a ranking, you display something to people, you send a ranking event. So like a user one within the session one within the query socks, seeing this item in this order. And you can also attach a couple of per item fields like relevancy coming from your first level retrieval, like BM25 scores from Elasticsearch or whatever you want to do. If it's recommendations, it can be cosine similarity between some embeddings or whatever. Uh, so, and every time someone clicked on an item, so user one within the session one purchased an item one, 
with some, a couple of fields, you just send this type of events. There can be multiple types of uh, interactions, nothing, nothing special, but the, one, the most important part, and then there should be a reference to the parent event which generated this ranking, this, this interaction. Uh, we're going to uh, play a bit with MetaRank right now. I know like live demos are always scary, something will break. So we have like our demo for the MetaRank available online. It's just a movie recommender. You can click on things you like. It will re-rank re in real time. Uh, and you can also see the ranking factors used. For me, it's just nothing here. And uh, it's using a, a special type of a data set. It's called RankLens. It's also open source. It's based on a famous movie lens data set. But uh, it has some movie metadata, but not only metadata, but also the what was displayed to the visitor and what this vis what visitor actually liked from this mo movie category. Uh, this data set is just like you have an item of Toy Story with this title, with this popularity, and just a bunch of things. There are some categorical features, there are some numbers here, and so on, just string fields, and so on and so forth. And uh, when the we present a ranking to a person. It's just a list of ideas what we were presented, and when the person does a click, it just, you know, a click over item 2687. Uh, so going back to the slides, uh, we're, and the next part, when you have your historical data ready, you need to map this historical events into the actual uh, ranking features, which are more suitable for the machine learning model. And we have, so the, the goal of MetaRank originally was just to make all these boring things together. So it's like a Lego blocks. You just collect them together to extract some common bits of information for this, from this data schema. And that's just call it a day. So if you have a number from your item, from your movie, like a budget, you just plug it as a number and ranking and that's it. You can do more complicated things like one hot encoding or label encoding, uh, categorical features, which will be mapped to some native categorical, categorical support for the underlying machine learning library, and do some user agent, geolocation, uh, refer, field parsing. But mm, you also can do counters. So you can run a global counter, like we're counting all the clicks for each product. And it, this counter will be global, always increasing, and then it will be biased towards old items because probably they will get more clicks because they are older. So then you can do some sliding window counters. Like, okay, we're still counting clicks for each item, but for seven days, like two weeks, one month, and two month buckets, which is moving every hour. You can also do it by yourself in Python, but it takes quite some time to be implemented properly to run both online and real time and on offline data. But it's just part of the meta rank. You can also just go further and divide these two window counters on each other to get rates. So you take clicks divided to impressions over different time windows and get a click through rate. If you have your like a funnel, conversion funnel with multiple types of events, you can just divide them and get more types of rates, like clicks, purchases to clicks rates or add to cards to purchases or whatever, but it's just the same syntax. We also do some tricks like rate normalization. So what if you have one click and two impressions? Is it like 50% conversion rate, click through rate? Probably not. So it can be normalized adding some prior. So it, in this case, it would be around average value across all other items. And the more clicks you have, the more it diverges to the side. But you don't need to implement it by yourself because it's just a part of thing, because it's kind of a typical thing in ranking systems. You can do some customer profiling, for example, for each. Uh, so we track all the colors of items you clicked before. And when you see yet another item of the same color, it's just notifying machine learning model with a specific feature like, OK, this item has the same color as the item viewed before. So do something with this. The machine learning model will at the end decide, because it's just not our job to tell machine what to do, uh, at least in machine learning. 
uh, and some other basic things like field matching and so on. So when we have our, so we're going to play around with a data set and we, I'm not going to write conf with this config file for MetroRank from scratch, but just show you the one we're using on the demo. So just a, a bunch of numerical fields taken as is from the data set because they are there. Some transformations, like why not just count number of words in the title and maybe uh, categorical stuff like different types of categories for movies. We do click-through rate, just dividing clicks to impressions over different time windows. We track the generous actors, tags and directors you clicked before, so it might affect your final ranking. So in this case, our ranking will be personalized because the ever next ranking will depend on your previous behavior. So different people might get different type of uh, ranking, uh, hopefully improving things, or maybe not. We'll see. And we just plug everything into a single model and like it's done. So right now I'm, we'll try to import this type of data set in MetaRank. So there is nothing fancy, just the data in the JSON format and the config file I so, uh, showed to you. You can do it with a Docker and it will just take some time importing. And while it is importing, I will show you what's actually going on. So as we have our click-through history, like all the activity happening for our auditorium uh, for each event, we compute this values of this feature values like we used for the ranking. It's not like for the for the now, but for different points in time. And while we are playing, we have quite a lot of these feature values, like snapshots in time, so we can go back if you want. At the same time, we also process all this ranking and all the clicks produced by this ranking. So we just join them into a single click through, but we can also join it with the actual values of ranking factors at that moment of time when this ranking happened. So it's just replaying everything, like replaying the whole traffic across your website and just logging your click throughs as they happen, but just with simulated time. Uh, and at the end, all these click-throughs are unfolded into some tabular format, which is much more suitable for machine learning. So you have an, like a click-through of with four items displayed. You have like values here, which were used for the ranking, like the price, colors, some platform, maybe number of clicks over different days. And we have a feedback, like implicit feedback, like clicks. So we know that item one and two were examined, but not clicked. So we might assume that it's a negative feedback. It's a, an item was clicked or purchased, then it's a positive feedback. If there is nothing happened, we have no idea, but probably negative. And we just throw it into the machine learning model. In our use case, it's meta rank, but it can be something different. And going back to our, oh, that started. And uh, we are going to send a couple of requests here. So at the first, we have a ranking event, just as a bunch of different identifiers of movies for user Alice in session Alice 1. And then we'll send a click that our Alice clicked on the movie like this. So at the first, um, we're going to send the, our ranking event just for, for our ranking endpoint. There are just top five items returned because I just omitted all others uh, with some numbers. It's not really personalized ranking because we don't have any feedback at all for this person. But let just at first notify the our uh, thing, the meta rank about that this ranking was displayed to the visitor. So the same event, but just different endpoint for the feedback. So we accepted it and so it goes on. And now we do a click. So we send a click there and it say to us that everything is fine, but something was updated, which is always nice. And uh, we send the same ranking event again, just to see how it will be affected by our behavior. And uh, the numbers are actually different and the items are actually different. So we did some sort of, you know, real time ranking based on our feedback happening right now. Uh, so uh, as we noticed, there is a, was a 
like a dynamic feature called interacted with. So it's just customer profiling. You clicked on this item, you clicked on something having this particular genre or whatever, and it affects your next steps. But it's not really limited to this. You can omit this type of uh, ranking feature, and then all people will get the same ranking, but it still be uh, optimized for a specific like NDCG or click-through rate or whatever. Uh, so that can be quite useful from differ in different like use cases driven by the business people when they want to see everything with their own eyes before going to production. And if your ranking is dynamic, that's kind of a questionable thing. Uh, we do plan not only focus on re-ranking, because for search, if you are doing search re-ranking or just categories, all that stuff, you already have some tooling to perform first level retrieval like search. Take Elasticsearch and call it day. If you go for recommendations, that's not that easy because uh, you need to start writing Python code and glue things together, deploy it, test it, and that's the problem. And uh, it would be nice to have something very basic available out of the box for MetaRank, so it can, you can start everything. So it's not like neural networks from the day one, probably, but hopefully in the future, but still going basic metrics, factorizations, recommendations within the MetaRank would be a cool thing to do. And some sort of a merchandising, because not all business people trust AI. It's like, okay, please increase click-through rate with your wonderful algorithms, but this brand should be on the top, and this one on the bottom and please don't show that. And after that, you can do whatever you want. So it would be great to have it as a like DSL, as a part of the ranking language, so you can define how your final ranking could be with some feedback not coming only from the machine learning model. It might know better, but it's hard to argue with business people about that. Um, MetaRank is not trying to cover everything, so it's trying to just cover things which it can could, can do good, uh, but just building on shoulders of giants. So we're trying to build it much more like cloud native in a way so it can be integrated in the Kubernetes without any uh, uh, heavy DevOps exp develop experience. So it just focuses on the parts around this machine learning thing, like collection, feature extraction, verification, a bit of a serving, but it's mostly handled by Kubernetes. So it's itself, it's just a stateless application. All the state is stored somewhere. Right now it's Redis, probably there will be something else, but it still works. Uh, surprisingly, even on quite a moderately sized uh, uh, websites, like 10 million unique visitors, 20 million is still fine, even with the Redis, even with the smaller instances with like five to 10 gigabytes of RAM. And so all the feature updates are coming from some sort of a queue. We support almost all of them. So <laughs> uh, so it's just uh, yet another deployment. You can leverage like auto scale it if you want. So nothing fancy. And uh, it's kind of a young, service, so we started working on it maybe a year ago, the first release, which was somehow usable maybe half a year ago, but we already have a couple of pilot projects running in with real traffic in production. It seems to be working. We have a demo, I already showed it to you. We have a giant backlog of tasks which we hopefully fix somewhere in the future. Uh, but uh, actually, the, we build this meta rank to solve our own pain, because if someone will ask me to implement this rolling window click-through rate feature to be implemented once more, I will just probably commit suicide because just I cannot handle it anymore. Uh, so it's just a collection of typical things you just can start with, and uh, but it can be useful for other people, so we're... Uh, eager for feedback, so if you have some ideas about how it can be used in your use case, or especially if you think that we're doing everything wrong and we need to do it another way, also come speak. Uh, we also have a Spop community Slack, so you can not only uh, should post on our GitHub issues, but also in Slack. Uh, <laughs> but that, that happens. Uh, so that's it. Uh, because everyone is tired, I need to be shorter than usual. And the most important part, like star us on GitHub, which is uh, a way to make 
like, uh, but uh, in a proper developer-friendly way. Uh, that's it. Uh, there is a QR code. I was tempted to add Recrawl there, but it's not Recrawl. Uh, it's like a proper one. So thank you for the listening. Thank you for your fluent English. It was really nice to listen to you. Uh, uh, so the questions. So, hello. Uh, you you um, were talking about these uh, interesting business exclusions and inclusions of some data into the ranking. How do you plan to implement it? You want to mix that into the model or do you some sort of the merging after the uh, model results are there? Probably it will be just post-filtering because I have no idea how to... So, uh, in my previous company I was worked for, there were so many diverse ways of mess with the ranking, like okay. it's just a nightmare. There was a DSL which was Boolean queries like, okay, if it's Wednesday, please boost this, but not on the top, but just a bit. So there are so many rules can be implemented by business people and at the end it's better just to do post filtering because I have no right. idea. You can technically plug it into the model like please that's a feature like a ranking feature. You need to use it somehow to rank it lower but it might outsmart you and still do the proper thing from the metrics perspective but people still want to promote this product. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the right. cost. Like. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Hi, thanks. Uh, I remember you mentioned uh, LightGBM and XGBoost as kind of backends for machine mm -hmm. learning. Uh, and we all know that supporting multiple backends might be painful because you need uh, a kind of abstraction layer over them. What happens if there is something that's supported only by one of them and not supported by another one and you want to use it for ranking? You implement a kind of shortcut for one particular backend or you simply try to stick to least common denominator in terms of functionality? Because we built this intermediate thing, here it is, also open source, just a wrapper. Which thing? Ah, ah it's not sharing the screen. Okay, so I'm showing you, that's just, <laughs> ah, so I'm back. So it's like a, and like a middleware for this types of uh, ranking algorithms. So MetaRank is just building on top of some abstraction layer, which supports uh, XGBoost and LightGBM. With LightGBM, it was also even more complicated than you th might think, because there is no GVM wrapper for the LightGBM, so we built this GVM wrapper, so it still works. And there are even people using it, like 36 stars. <laughs> but it works quite well. OK, thanks. We have a question in the first row. Thank you. Uh, does MetaRank work with uh, HDFS? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the answer. So for HDFS, but it's quite trivial to add, but uh, it's usually just a lot of different things to be implemented and not so many hands to implement it. So for GVM, like HDFS integration is like, I don't know, one hour of work, so it's not that hard to do, but no one asked us to do it. So it's usually about S3 or just local files, because if you like, so it's rarely the data set is so huge, so it won't fit on your machine. If it's so huge, so it won't fit on your machine, even in this um, condensed, compressed format we want to use, uh, hopefully you're probably working in Yandex, so and you already have something about that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello. How does uh, MetaRank handle uh, feedback loop, or maybe there are some ways to adjust diversity of the results? Not yet. We do plan to add some diversity support, but it's mostly related to our recommendation support. So we want to have some sort of embedding computed uh, for from the recommender engines and use it as a part of diversifying the search results. So you see that there are too many similar items in the ranking and you ask model to do something about that. Who knows what will do it? 
what, 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 what will it do? So it depends on the behavior. If people like when everything is the same, so probably it would be just promoting more similar items. If people dislike or their behavior show that they dislike, they will be probably just demoting two similar items. But it's still that's the plan, but not yet. And for the feedback loop, as like a feedback loop that you train the model on the same data you produced with your model, that's kind of a complicated thing. So technically, you need to do some de biasing on top of that, or maybe have some not the whole data set like like exploit, explore, split. So you don't run MetaRank on a part of the traffic which is then used for training. MetaRank can do multiple models. So the most the most um, notorious model is do nothing. So it can be just a part of an A/B test, but just without any ranking. And then, like this. But still, for my experience, like this model bias is kind of an advanced thing, and uh, people rarely start thinking about it when they don't have any ranking at all. Oh, one more. So yeah, I have uh, another question. So this is the open source library, right? The it's on GitHub. Source, yeah. Open source product. So uh, the question is, is there any community already formed, like uh, um, some external people or companies contributing to the MetaRank or not yet? Uh, so there are some open source contributions. They're happening from people I have no idea who they are, but All they right. are usually... That's a good uh, sign. Yeah, that's a good sign, but they're <laughs> quite narrow. So there was a guy who found some race condition in the code. Like, wow. you don't need to do it like this. That's one liner fix to okay. fix your race condition. That's not so easy to find, actually. I have no idea what how he started doing it, like right. what, what happened, what the story behind this race condition. But it's probably it's, working on a race condition detector and more drugs. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's in Scala, so it's a very obscure language mm -hmm. for a race condition detector to support. So that's even more interesting. What's the All story? Right. Or there is an issue with some uh, person, I have no idea, it's just a random nickname with some, like, what? why don't we do a PyTorch support, but through the GNI bindings. Actually, that's an examples of the code you can use. And if you're not against the PyTorch way of doing things, I can do a contribution. I have no idea who this person, but still, it happens. Good. So about the companies, I don't know. People, yeah, mm -hmm. but not that much. So what's your plan about the open source? Do you plan to support it in the long term or...? Yeah, so that's, that's a good question. So right now it's more about community, so we build something. So if you build a clone of an existing closed source product, it's quite easy to promote that, okay, yeah. that's like this, but open source. We build something that has no... So there are some closed source, like probably on all the companies working on ranking, there are thousands of similar systems built. They are nameless. No one knows about them, but that's kind of an alternative to them. But still, you need to work on education and on the community that this thing exists. And next time, in your next company, when you start a ranking project from scratch, you will remember that, okay, there is meta rank. What, let's use it, this and not just do everything in house. Great, thanks. So that's the goal for the next year. That's why I write more articles than code for the last couple of months. And that's why you are here, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes. So if we have listened to all of the questions and you have to select the best one. Uh -huh. So I will choose this in the hat, this <laughs> one. Man in the hat. Man in the hat, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yours present is in the speaker's room, so after the talk uh, you can go there and take it. It's a surprise present, uh -huh. I don't know what's that. Cognac. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Cognac, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. That was uh, really interesting and actually refreshing, although this is the uh, second uh, from the end talk today, but I feel like I'm 
and all here are ready for the last one. Uh, thank you for that as well, uh, and bringing this really nice topic to the conference. So, okay. Uh,